YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying to extract some silver from some silver solder. It's called Stay Silv 15. I bought this at National Welders. That's the place I buy my gas, my uh, oxyacetylene gases for my torches. And they had this on the shelf. And so I bought a stick of it. I think it was about $50. And it's Stay Silv 15. I looked up the uh, data sheet and the 15 means that there's 15% silver in this material. So we're going to try to extract that and we're going to do it right now. I'm going to start the experiment by weighing the uh, sticks of silver solder on a scale here. There's 28 of them in the package. It's going to lay them on the scale here and get a weight in grams. 455.8 455.8 on the weight got 455.8 grams I'm going to multiply that since it's 15% silver by 0.15 that gives us 68.37 grams of pure silver divide that by 31 0.1 which is 2.19 troy ounces that's how much silver we should be extracted from this silver solder we'll see what happens I'll begin the experiment by cutting the uh, pieces of solder into smaller pieces so that they can fit inside this beaker As I was cutting, I noticed that the uh, each stick is marked multiple times. It says Harris 15. I'll be working in a fume hood here to vent the gases away from me as I work. Go ahead and turn that on. I've got the silver solder in a two liter beaker here with a cover on it. I'm gonna add some distilled water to it, about 500 ml. Place it on the heat. Turn the heat on about medium. I'll be dissolving the metal with concentrated nitric acid mixed with distilled water to form dilute hot nitric acid. Go ahead and add some right now. I'm adding about, uh, I'll say, 50, 100 ml, something like that. about 100 ml there Go ahead and cover it up and we'll see what happens here and the solution is turning blue that's an indication that we got copper going to the solution Dilute nitric, hot dilute nitric will dissolve the copper and the silver. It should dissolve everything in this, uh, this silver solder brazing rod. It should get everything to go into solution and then we'll pull the silver out of it. Sticks of silver solder have been on uh, the heat now with a little dilute nitric acid boiling for about 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add some more uh, nitric acid here. Got to add it slowly because this solution's hot. It will react right vigorously when I pour that nitric in there.
requests for uh, thermometer or uh, temperature readings on my experiment. So I uh, hit it with the digital thermometer there. You can see it's 157 degrees inside there. I'm going to add another 250 ml of distilled water here so that the metal has some place to go as it dissolves. Now I'm going to add some more uh, nitric acid to it. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the nitric acid. And that's about 200, 250 ml of nitric acid so far inside the uh, beaker there. The experiment's been on the heat now for about two and a half hours and I've got a uh, precipitate forming inside the beaker and it started to give me a little bit of steam hammer here where the steam explosions caused the beaker to uh, shake. Went ahead and took it off the heat to add this uh, distilled water banging pretty good so uh, I don't want that to happen while I've got the lid off. Now I'm going to add some more uh, nitric acid just a little bit. I've got a uh, little beaker here with about 250 ml more nitric acid. I'm going to add a little bit of that to this and uh, see what kind of reaction we get here. I've turned the heat down to low. I'm going to put the, uh, the experiment back on the burner here and try to continue with some lower heat to prevent that uh, hammer, that steam hammer, from happening. I'm going to add a few more ml of nitric acid and just let this cook for a while. Probably another 50 ml of nitric there. As you can see, there's some uh, precipitate that's formed on the bottom of the beaker. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm hoping it's silver chloride so that uh, so that we can get the silver out of this. And I'm going to continue with this experiment, try to get everything to go into solution, and then we'll go from there. It's been on there for about two hours and uh, 45 minutes now. Been four hours since we started this, and I'm going to add some more nitric acid here. Let's see if we can keep the reaction going. All right, we've been on the heat now for a little over five hours. I thought this was going to be a quick and easy one but it's turning out to be a little bit more than I suspected. Uh, this is another 200 ml of uh, nitric acid that I'm adding here. I've got 200 plus 250 plus this 200, so it'll be 650. It's 150 ml of nitric so far, and I think right around a liter of uh, distilled water. The silver solder has been on the heat in dilute nitric acid for about seven hours now and I'm going to go ahead and add me about another uh, 75 ml of nitric acid here so far I've got about 650 in there and about one liter of water I'm getting some precipitate building up inside there I don't quite know what it is but we're going to just keep going with this until uh, we get a result
the experiment has been on low heat for the last 12 hours it is almost 24 hours later uh, since I started the experiment and as you can see it's been sitting there for 12 hours at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit I added another 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid for a total of about 800 ml of uh, concentrated nitric acid in the experiment so far. There's a precipitate that has formed inside the beaker. I think most of the sticks have uh, been dissolved now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this off the heat, pour it off, and see if I can precipitate some silver chloride, hydrochloric acid. What I'll do now is transfer the solution out of the reaction vessel back here on the heat into this clean beaker. Now I'm going to put the experiment back on the heat and uh, add some distilled water and continue trying to get everything to go in the solution here. About 500 ml. Got about 100 ml of concentrated nitric acid here. I'm going to add that to the beaker. Try to get it on some of that blue precipitate in there. I don't know what that is. this up. And then uh, I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to this and see if we can get the silver chloride to come out of solution. And we're going to add the hydrochloric acid to this solution. See if we can precipitate some silver chloride. Add a little bit at first, see what happens here. And we do get a bloom of silver chloride, it looks like. Some kind of precipitate. I'm going to add a dash more of the uh, hydrochloric acid here and see if uh, anything else will precipitate out. Really look like it. And that's looking like silver chloride. Those lumps. Inside the reaction vessel here, there's uh, quite a few different things going on, it looks like. Uh, the rods have mostly dissolved. The bridging rod is mostly dissolved. I've got some precipitate down at the bottom of the beaker here. Some white looking stuff and some gray looking stuff. I'm not quite sure what all that is. Anyway, I'm going to try to get all the rest of this to go into solution. And keep going with the experiment and see how much silver we can get out of this. The experiment has been on now for just a little over 24 hours now. And 
uh, temperature inside there is 163 degrees. Now I turn the heat up just a touch. I've got some uh, nitric acid here, about 100 ml. I'm going to add 100 ml more nitric acid to the experiment. Try to get everything to go into solution. will be about a liter of nitric acid that I've added so far. Give it a quick stir here. It's been 36 hours since I've started the experiment here. I've had this thing on heat the whole time. Temperature in there is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, if you notice, everything, all I've got is little sticks of uh, precipitate left. I think all the metal's gone into solution just about. And there's still a little bit of metal left there. It's kind of crumbling though breaking apart. I don't know if that's metal or if it's some other kind of substance in there. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, pour this off and try to precipitate the silver chloride out of this solution and continue on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pour this into our uh, into our large beaker here and uh, see if we can get some silver chloride formed. Yes, it is. It's forming up nicely. That's what we want to see right there. Just a quick stir here. Looks like we've got enough of uh, the hydrochloric acid in there to get all the silver to uh, form silver chloride. So the reaction is complete. We'll let this settle out and then we'll rinse that chloride off real good. Now we'll convert that to pure silver metal with some lye and sugar. I wanted to take a look down into the uh, reaction beaker here. There's still some sticks left in there along with some other uh, precipitate, probably some copper compound. So I didn't get 100% of the silver solder, the brazing rod, to go into solution. I could probably continue this with some more uh, dilute nitric acid on the heat, but I'm going to go ahead and call it for now. We're going to go ahead and go with the, uh, the silver chloride that we got precipitated from the bottom of this beaker. I'll siphon the waste into a waste bucket here. I've got a tube full of water. Put my thumb over one end, block it off, put the other end into the waste. Just let my thumb off. Suck all the uh, waste fluid out into this bucket down here. Got some hot tap water here. I'm gonna rinse the silver chloride off with some hot tap water. And the silver chloride settles quickly. Go ahead and siphon this off into the waste bucket. What I'll do is I'll transfer this, uh, this blue solution that I'm siphoning off, it's waste. Transfer it off into my waste treatment bucket. It's full of iron and the copper will cement out on that iron. Any trace amounts of uh, silver chloride that's down in that waste solution I'll rinse those out and recover those.
this is the silver chloride that I recovered from the uh, silver brazing rod. I'm going to transfer it to a tall beaker here so we can convert it to uh, pure silver metal with lye and sugar. I've got a handheld blender here that I bought from the uh, thrift store. It's got a little blade on the end of it. I'm going to try to use that to uh, do the conversion here. I got some sodium hydroxide here. I'm going to add about, uh, I'm not going to measure anything, I'm just going to dump some in. And we're going to try to convert the, uh, the silver chloride to a black colored silver oxide. And you can see down at the bottom there it's already starting to turn black. Here we go with the blender and see how this is going to work. It's the first time I've ever done this so we'll just have to see how it works. That worked pretty good. Stirring it around down in there, I don't see a whole lot of white silver chloride left. And that's a pretty black color. It's kind of a grayish color. I'm going to add just a touch more of this uh, sodium hydroxide. I probably got a total of maybe four or five tablespoons in there. <laughs> thermic reaction that's going to heat up pretty good there. You see it's 173 degrees. I'm going to rinse it off with some water here. You don't have to use distilled water. Tap water is okay. Now I'm going to add some sugar. I just want to get a reading on the heat inside of here. It says 116. It's cooled off significantly. Now the sugar is really going to make it uh, heat up regular old table sugar like you put in your coffee. You see it turning color down there. It's coating the inside of the beaker with uh, silver. goes bubbling. This is a highly exothermic reaction. It's up to 194 now. And you clearly see the uh, silver down here. It's a silver, it's a gray powder at the bottom of the beaker. Go ahead and rinse all the lye and the sugar out of here. Get it to a filter and melt it up and see what kind of yield we got. I've allowed the uh, silver to settle overnight. And now what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and start rinsing the silver out. Before I do that though, what I want to do is take care of this waste. What I'm going to do is take these pieces of metal, this is iron here, and I'm going to put them in my waste treatment bucket. And then we're going to put the waste down inside here so that it can be processed for proper disposal. This is just copper in solution. When I pour it in that bucket, the copper will cement out onto the iron 
forming copper metal and the iron will go into solution. As you can see there's a little bit of silver chloride left in there. I'll rinse that out and uh, process that separately. But it's very little, less than a tenth of a gram of silver probably. This is the silver chloride that uh, came from the waste bucket. And what I'm going to do is rinse it out of the uh, waste bucket here and add it to my silver chloride jar that I save up. And then when I get enough of it, I process it into pure silver so I can run it through my silver cell. There's not very much silver chloride here, as you can see. But it's worth, uh, worth going ahead and getting it out and saving it. And you can see that the uh, copper has already started to cement out onto the uh, iron pieces that I had in there. What I've got is I've got a bubbler that I stick in here and bubble air through it to keep movement going. Stick the lid on. Put my bubbler down, down through the uh, center hole here. Stick it back up underneath my uh, fume hood. That's how we uh, get the copper out of solution and treat that waste. Now I'm going to siphon off the uh, lion sugar solution from on top of the silver. I got a tube of water here. Stick my thumb over one end, stick the other end in the solution I want to uh, siphon and just let my thumb off. I'm going to do about three or four of these hot water rinses. This is tap water from the uh, new tap. Just hot tap water. Here we go. What we're trying to do is rinse all that lye off of the uh, silver before we try to melt it. And as you can see, the rinse water down there is. Uh, very high in pH, looks like it's up around 14, highly alkaline. And then what we'll do here is take another reading on our uh, rinsed silver jar here. See how well we rinsed it out. And that's going to be down around between 8 and 9. So we're getting there. I'm going to siphon the water off of this uh, silver now and we'll go ahead and get it into a filter and see if we can get it melted. Now I'll get our silver into a filter so we can melt it into a button. That's what the cement silver looks like pure silver metal powder. Well, I underestimated the amount of silver I had in the beaker there, so I'm going to have to get that into another filter paper. In the meantime, I'm going to put this into a melt dish. have to run another filter paper for the rest of the silver. Now I'll get the rest of the silver into this uh, next filter paper and then we'll get it in the melt dish and melt it up and see what kind of a uh, volume of silver we got out of these uh, brazing sticks. Okay I've got the rest of the silver in the funnel here in a filter paper. I'm going to go ahead and add it to this uh, first batch here into the melt dish. We'll put some fire on it and melt it up into a butt and see what we got. Before I start to melt, I just wanted to review here. This is the waste bucket. A little bit of the silver got carried over during those rinses. I'll let that settle out, siphon off the waste, and I'll recover a little bit of silver in there. Be tense only, not very much, but enough to recover. And then up here, we've got this uh, residual amount that was left over when we tried to dissolve everything. 
I elected to quit going with that because it was using up an excessive amount of nitric acid. And then I also had the silver chloride from the uh, silver chloride rinses that I recovered into the other beaker there. So those are gonna affect our yield, those three things. Go ahead and get the melt started now. I'm gonna start with the uh, map gas torch and then I'll uh, map gas in the yellow cylinder there and then I'll uh, add the oxyacetylene once we get going here I've got the button here sitting on low heat. What we're going to do now is add a little bit of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid to this. Just a couple of ml. And what that'll do is that'll clean the button up nicely. Make it nice and shiny. Get all that flux off of there. Here's our button of pure silver. Probably close to 99% pure. Came out looking pretty good. Go ahead and throw it on a scale here and see what kind of uh, weight we got. We got 45.2 grams of 99% uh, pure silver, just under 1.5 troy ounces. Well, that was definitely a little more challenging than I expected. I expected to have that thing done in one day. Uh, as you can see in the video, it took a liter of nitric acid to get all that metal to go in solution. The yield was uh, 45 grams. I was expecting, what, 63 grams, I think we calculated. Expecting just over 2 troy ounces and yielded just under 1.5 troy ounces. But we did get the silver out. You keep in mind now, I was not trying to uh, profit, make a profit from refining this silver. What I'm trying to do here is show the process of how the silver can be extracted out of that brazing rod. And I think I did a pretty good job of that. So this will conclude the extraction of the silver from the silver brazing rod. Hope you learned something. Uh, I check my comments every day. So if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to leave, leave those uh, for the video and I'll uh, try to answer the questions the best that I can. Thanks for watching.